it's one of the oldest industries known to man, and in the age of modern technology, it's still one of the most crucial to our existence. But while agriculture used to mean plowing the fields and caring for the cattle, today it involves much more. Farmers are educated people these days. They have to be. Rich Rominger just celebrated his 85th birthday alongside a whole family of farmers. Six generations of Romingers have been farming this land just outside of Sacramento since the 1870s. Well, we'll start some fields harvesting in about four to five weeks. And as you can imagine, a lot has changed within that time. Aside from farming all of his life, Rominger has served as California's Secretary of Food and Agriculture and as Deputy Secretary at the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. He's also a graduate of the nation's leading agriculture school, the University of California, Davis. His was the class of 1949. Now, when I went to school there, the only thing on the Davis campus was the College of Agriculture. So it wasn't until later in the 50s when it became a general campus. A lot of people in the urban environment don't really know that the fact that the pastas and the salsas and everything they get are all tomatoes that started at UC Davis. The next section Rich's the sons, and Bruce and Rick, cycling. also attended UC Davis and followed in their father's footsteps, including maintaining a strong relationship with their alma mater, the research university that started literally as the satellite farm school for UC Berkeley. At the time, it was considered a risky, innovative idea born from students themselves. Over time, this student farm evolved into a major public research university, the University of California, Davis, and has since produced many leaders in the world of agriculture and many innovations that have changed farming as Rich Rominger used to know it. Well, this is an example right here with the tomatoes because Davis developed the mechanical harvester and also bred the varieties of tomatoes that could be mechanically harvested. The mechanical tomato harvester, invented at UC Davis more than 30 years ago, really was a game changer. Farmers used to hand pick tomatoes. This machine enabled them to cover an acre of plants in just a half hour. While it replaced human labor at the time, it also led to a boom in tomato production, eventually employing more people than before and making California's Central Valley the epicenter of tomato processing. UC Davis has, has been an incredible driver of the economy of California through its innovations in agriculture. Uh, most of the crops that we grow in California have as their origin discoveries at UC Davis. Neil Van Alphen is the former dean of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences at UC Davis. Chardonnay and Merlot. But he grew up in California's Central Valley and understands the challenges and the changes farmers are facing today. In fact, he farms his own 20 acres not far from the UC Davis campus. Because the world changes, we have to change. And uh, so that's, that's always the biggest challenge is how do you anticipate uh, what's over the horizon and prepare for it. And Farmers constantly face change. Pests adapt to their environment. Water is always at a shortage. And then there's the weather. For more than 100 years, UC Davis has studied and shaped a healthy, abundant food supply in the most agriculture-rich state in our nation. What many people don't understand is that farming is an incredibly knowledge-intensive endeavor. We are trying to control the variables of nature and produce crops on a sustainable and consistent basis. And that takes a lot of knowledge. And this is where all of that knowledge comes to life. UC Davis operates a market garden, children's garden, ecological garden, and a 300-acre long-term research facility called Russell Ranch. The good thing about using uh, small implements like this is you can kind of move them by hand. It's an education in agriculture that's as much hands-on as it is classroom and research focused. There are courses that teach students everything from plant breeding to truck driving to welding. We try to make certain that everybody who comes through this major gets their boots muddy and their hands dirty, as well as getting the top agricultural and environmental education you can get anywhere. So, Isaac O'Leary is an incoming freshman. As a Regent Scholar, he's also one of California's top students. He chose UC Davis because of its newest major, sustainable agriculture and food systems. We have better access to food than anyone else, and yet our food system is still completely askew. 
and not to mention horrible food, uh, food distribution issues elsewhere in the world. It's a modern day focus on the social, economic and environmental aspects of food and agriculture, an industry that's made up of much more than sowing the land. It's time for this generation to step up and uh, take control of the food system, I think. So our aspiration is to be training that generation of leaders that will go out. Some will be farmers and ranchers. Some may go into politics. Some will go into public service, journalism, agribusiness, finance, the whole range. I mean, the food system touches so many parts of our lives and of our economy. California agriculture is a $37 billion a year industry, and the Golden State has led the nation in ag production for the last 50 years. And this campus lies in the heart of it all, which makes local farmers an obvious partner for UC Davis researchers. This is Rockland. Um, you know, this is a, a really nice hard red wheat variety. Kent Britton is a farm advisor for UC Cooperative Extension, aimed at enhancing agricultural productivity throughout the state. Yeah, see how white it is and everything. It's just a we decide what works where, when the problems come up, we're the people that solve those problems. Here at the Rominger Farm, Britton was given a five acre plot of land to conduct research trials on wheat. So I'm growing all the latest uh, wheat varieties and triticale varieties to pick out the varieties that are best suited for this type of climate and this, these type of soils. At the end of his trials, the Romingers will harvest and keep the wheat, and UC Cooperative Extension gains valuable information that will help increase yields, decrease pests, and aid farmers and researchers statewide. And so it's, it's valuable for us because next year we'll be planting something that he says, oh, this was a great yield or didn't get any diseases, so we'll take it and we'll plant it next year on a larger scale in our fields. As a young farmer, a beginning farmer, I relied solely on Cooperative Extension farm advisors. Those Just down the road is Sierra Orchards, farmed by Craig McNamara, who's very active in advocacy as well as education. As founder and president of the Center for Land-Based Learning, he works with UC Davis on teaching youth the importance of agriculture to our society. In fact, he's a UC Davis alumnus as well. So I like to think of it as the three Ps, people, planet, and profit. 28-year-old Toby Hastings is one of many success stories that have come out of the Center for Land-Based Learning, where Toby leased land to start his own organic farming business. Free Spirit Farms now provides produce to 40 restaurants in San Francisco, and Hastings pays it forward by working with youngsters who visit the farm. Most of the kids have never been on a farm, and, and they don't really know um, what it's like to be a farmer and I'm able to take them around, show them what day-to-day -day life is like for me, and, and do things like harvest and weed and pretty much anything I'd normally be doing. Indeed, as the prototypical farmer changes, there will be many other changes to farming in the next century. Farmland itself is shrinking, while farming is taking a growing toll on our environment. At the same time, our population is growing too. Experts expect we'll have 9 billion mouths to feed by the year 2050. Nonetheless, students, farmers, and educators say they're optimistic. With a legacy born at this university, the proficiency of the nation's most successful farmers, and the next generation becoming more educated and more aware than ever before, the challenges can be met. So what we've got to make sure we do is to continue this student farm as a place where students can try out these wacky, fringy, surprising things that 30 years from now are going to be the mainstream.